Hey guys, and welcome to the second complete retouch, part two. In this section, we're going to go over frequency separation. We're going to use the sample and paint method to retouch his skin. So in the first section, we went over blemishes. And let's just go ahead and look at the before and the after with that. We did blemishes as well as a little bit of liquify tool. And we did a nice job cleaning the skin up. Now, all that was done at like a pretty close zoom level, right? We we're working on the pores. What we're going to be doing now is working on more of like a global scale. Like what about this image needs to be changed globally? And it's little things like this little area you can see is a bit dark. So it kind of creates a, a you know little shape right there. It's a little bit dark right here, for instance. So that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be working on in this section. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is go ahead and open up our actions. We're going to go to window and then down to actions. Now, if you've loaded the Flurm retouching action, which I guess you probably have by now because we used it in the last tutorial, you'll see Flurm retouching. Within that is two dodge and burn. We have a frequency separation for 8-bit and one for 16-bit. Okay, so how do you know which one to use? Well, just go to image and then down here to mode. If it says 8 bits, then you should use the one that says 8 bits. If it says 16 bits, you should use the one that says 16 bits. Pretty easy. And if you guys don't have these, go ahead and make sure, again, make sure you're in your actions. So window down here to actions. That's going to load this up. If you don't have the Flurn retouching action group, go ahead and click on this menu here. Go down to where it says load actions. And then you're going to want to go to your download package your getting started section and here in your actions you're going to just double click on the flurn retouching .atn, and that'll give you this okay so now it's time to go ahead and use our 16-bit frequency separation action because we know we are in 16-bit all right great so to use it just click on it and then hit this play button right here there we go now it's going to ask us to blur skin texture we're going to hit continue and you know what i'm going to go up just a little bit more so we really can't see any of the skin texture. Okay. Great. Now it's done. Uh, you can read that on your own if you'd like. I'll explain it to you in greater detail because we're already in a video. Basically, it's just going to create a uh, folder here with two layers in it. Now this bottom layer is a blurred layer. This layer contains like the color for your image. And this top layer contains the texture for your image. Okay, it's set to a linear light blend mode, and that's what's allowing us to have texture on one layer and color on another. Now, this is really, really helpful because let's say you just want to retouch texture. All you want to do is retouch texture. Well, if I hit S for the clone stamp tool, I can start clone stamping from one part of this layer to another, but I have to make sure that I'm sampling just the current layer. That's very important. When you're on a frequency separation when you're on the texture layer here make sure you're sampling just the current layer that way if I sample this area right here which is this texture and paint right there it's just putting the texture from here right over there so you're able to kind of clean up any textures you'd like or add textures as needed as well it's a very very good way to retouch now if you had this set to current and below this is what happens right <laughs> that's not what you want because it's taking like the color from here and putting it on there too so make sure again put it to current layer all right and now i can go around and i can work on just my texture so we're going to do that for a minute anything that is like kind of bugging me that is obviously just texture related now this is really great because it's not affecting color at all we're not like removing blemishes we're just kind of changing skin texture um, there we go. All right. And you'll be able to see that like oftentimes that's really all you need in order to make your image how you want it. It's just a change in texture. All right. There we go. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. See if we can put some of this texture over here where the eye is. Maybe... You can see it does have a little bit of a like, it's so crazy to get this far zoomed into someone's face. See all this little detail. All right, there we go. Well, you know what? I think I like the before. I think I like seeing that much detail. Um, we'll wind up toning it down just a little bit, but I think I'm gonna leave those for now. After all, we are working with a, a male portrait here, so I don't mind a little bit of that stuff. 
All right. Cool. So hopefully you guys are getting a decent idea of like what we actually mean by, you know, skin texture and there we go. We're almost done. Now, if this isn't something where I have to like do it in one shot and then like I never get a chance to do it again. You could come back to this skin texture layer later if you'd like. Okay. So that's an idea on texture. Now let's talk about color. I'm just going to create a new layer. We can kind of talk about color. All right. Let's start with this area around his eye. Can you see this area here is relatively light? Like it comes right over here, okay, and then stops there. That's like kind of light. And then right here, it kind of gets dark right there. You can almost like see a line. Let's zoom in here, right? Like there's almost a line right here from like light and dark. And you're probably like, oh, that is weird. Um, <laughs> it happens all the time. Like, see this on his face see how there's this like dark like shadow thing right here that's like pretty much makes up like look to the left and to the right of that like here's the before you, you there is a line there like that's naturally occurring on his face there where it's just lighter here and darker there and see how it's like a lot more red here than it is right here so people have a huge amount of color variation on their face it's like you know it, it's insane like see how this patch looks like it's like gray and this you know that looks brown that looks gray this looks reddish right there we've got some dark color patches here you know like a dark patch there it's just really common that people have different colors you know in different parts of their skin so that's what we're going to work on fixing okay now between our high frequency layer and our low frequency layer we're going to create a new layer and i'm going to use our brush tool to go ahead and start sampling and painting. We're gonna use the sample and paint method. So I'm gonna right click and choose one of the Flurn brushes. We'll start off at about 400. All right, if you don't haven't loaded the Flurn retouch brushes, just go to your little icon here, your tool icon, go down to load brushes. And then here in your getting started section, just double click on Flurn retouch brushes. Great, good job. All right, now I'm gonna paint with my brush tool at about 10% flow, which is just gonna allow me to do a slow buildup. All right, let's start off here with the eye. Now for this, I don't need to be super zoomed in, okay? In fact, if you are so zoomed in, you, you really don't get an idea of like overall transition and shape and tone and things like that. Being zoomed out is actually a lot better for this step. For the blemish removal, you wanna be zoomed in, but for this step, being zoomed out is a little bit better. All right, right about there looks good. Okay, so basically I'm gonna sample some of this color that's lighter and paint it right down here. Then I'm gonna sample some of this color that's darker and paint it right up here. So let's go ahead and start that. All right, so sample and paint. And as I need my area to like blend in a little bit bigger, I'll just make my brush a little bit larger as well. All right, go ahead and make our brush a little smaller and then bring that in there. Beautiful. So that looks great, right? This looks totally natural. Let's go ahead and turn this off and on. So there's the before and the after. We lighten that area up a little bit and we got rid of that line. Cool, now if you wanna darken it up a little bit, let's make that visible. You just create a new layer above there and then sample this darker color and then paint it dark. I could keep going if I wanted like a, you know, start contouring his eye, I could start doing that if I wanted. Right, sample this darker color and paint in there. It's just color that you have here. And like, you know, at this point, we're working with a two dimensional image, right? So you could, you know, you could see I'm like totally changing the shape of his face using this technique, just sampling colors and then painting them. It's pretty gnarly, right? Let's look at the before and the after with that. Obviously, that's not what we want. He doesn't look like a person anymore. But that's the idea behind the technique. And because, let's just hit Command Plus a few times, because our skin texture is stored on a totally different layer, even if I paint in here, we still have all of our skin texture intact over top of it. 
Okay, so that's basically the idea of what we're gonna be doing. And now let's go ahead and do it. Sample an area and paint. All right, I find this to be pretty fun actually. All right, because you can do a lot of like, you can make an image look a lot better slash different um, pretty quickly, really, I think. All right. Let me just finish with the top of the head here, and then we'll just show you that, guys what that looks like so you can, you can see the benefit of it kind of in real time, IRT. You could even paint away a little bit of the shine if you wanted. All right, we probably will, and then I'll probably just go in and change the texture in that area too. See how I've changed the color, which looks good, but I've also changed the I haven't changed the texture, so it looks like texture, like, you know what I mean? There, it looks like there should be some shine there. And you know what? We'll bring it back a little bit. I'm going to grab my eraser tool and just erase this away just a little bit, just to get it more realistic there. All right. Because skin does have shine in it. It's not like, <laughs> not like that's a fluke accident, you know? It's like that's how skin reflects light. Um... So getting rid of it completely just wouldn't look natural, right? All right, there we go. But I can clean it up. I can make it look smooth and nice and good. That's for dang sure. All right. Cool. Looking pretty good here. Looking pretty good. All right. Now you can see it's just like little by little here. It's not it's not really anything that like I clicked one button and it was like, "Whoa, you, that totally changed everything." It's like yeah, it's just little things, little changes here and there. They all tend to add up. Just like in life. All right. Aaron, are you trying to teach about us about life in a Photoshop tutorial? <laughs> well, gave me away. All right. I'm gonna make his head look so good. Who has such a perfect head? I love this too, because all of our skin texture is intact. So like you can print this out and you can zoom in and you can look at it super big and whatnot. And you're always going to be able to see all the skin texture. So it's just, it just makes it look real basically. Like it's, this is kind of, you know, this is already pretty retouched, especially on his head area, but it doesn't look retouched really like it it's you know you still see all the pores and everything like that it just looks like nice and clean which is what you want all right might be too clean i don't know we'll see uh let's go ahead and turn this layers off and on i think all we've done so far is this head yeah so i'm going to shift click the three of those layers because they all pretty much do the same thing and i'm going to hit Control or command e to merge them together okay now, if I use my move tool and just put this over here, you guys can see what that looks like, right? Like all I did was just paint this on a new layer. See, I'm like always sampling a color and then painting it, right? I'm just like, you know, like basically covering up the blemishes, right? So let's see what this looks like before and after. Here's our before and our after. Pretty nice, right? It's like, whoa, that actually is quite the change. Now, if you don't like anywhere or like you think you may have overdone the place or whatever, like this, I think, needs a little bit more definition. Um, just grab your eraser tool, E for the eraser tool, and just start erasing it away. 
right? It's like not, you know, not a big deal. Just erase it away. Use a pretty low flow. I'm at a flow of 10%, so it's gonna like, it's gonna erase, but it's gonna do it slowly. And then when you get to the place where you're, where you like, just, you know, stop erasing. <laughs> it's that simple. What, you can stop? Yeah. All right, there we go. So you can see his head like, wow, that's a good looking head. Let's make a new layer and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna keep going here because my golly, you deserve it. All right, and I'm just gonna continue. Same thing here, just sampling an area of the photo and painting right next to it. Our goal here being to blend different areas of the photo together. All right, so anywhere that I see something that's just not like smooth, basically. You know, and by smooth, I don't mean like skin texture wise. I just mean mostly like transition like this. You see this nose highlight, like it stops there and then it starts again. Well, I'm going to sample that white because I, I want this like nose highlight to continue, right? Like I think that should, you know, why would that just stop there and then start again? It shouldn't. And then I'm going to just slim it up a little bit there on the right. All right, there we go. That's basically like painting is what we're doing here. We're painting, but it's like, it's like kind of easy painting really. Cause you, you know, you're painting over top of an image. So it's not, I mean, this is not hard, right? It's not like we're, you know, oh, I, I sat in the square in Vienna and painted the people as they drove by. You know, it's not like, <laughs> it's not definitely, you know, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I got too entrenched in there. Anyway, it's it's easy enough. It you don't have to go to art school to be able to do this, right? Like you could probably I mean I'm talking to you while I'm doing it, so it's not, you know, like I'm not intensely focused, you know. So sample and kind of paint. Some of this stuff's actually easier if you don't like focus too hard. Like if you let your, like if you focus on this stuff too hard, sometimes it, it can like become too like rigid. This is one of those things where you kind of want to like, just let it, let the photo kind of like be what it wants to be. Yeah. I'm sounding like <laughs> super new agey right now, but. Just let the photo be what it wants, man. <laughs> That's the ticket. All right. Cool. All right, let's take a look at the before and the after with this. I think it's looking really nicely, nice so far. Just want to make sure that what I'm doing is in fact working the way I want it to work. All right, here's this layer off and then back on. I'd say that it's working. Cool. Let's create another layer and go on the chin. See how blotchy this chin is right there? We're, we're going to fix all that up. Okay. Let's sample this color. Kind of paint it down. Like that's the color that's nice on this chin area. So we're going to paint it in there. Grab this nice color there and bring it on over. It's just like whatever looks natural, basically. If an area looks like a weird dark patch, then you know, you're probably okay to get rid of it. 
just keep in mind you you have like the power here to really change a lot about an image um and in this case it's it's people's faces right so like you know you can totally change what a person's face looks like with this so just like have that in mind while you retouch that it's you know it's more than just like oh i'm you know going in and fixing some pores like you have the opportunity to make this person look like a, a totally different person um which you know i i don't recommend doing by the way i i think make them look like themselves make them just look like a you know cleaned up version of themselves all right cool grab some highlight color pull that into the chin a little bit more all right so we can see this is not too hard Oops, color balance just zoom it out to about there darken his chin up a little bit all right bring some of the shadow in there cool let's make this visible and not visible there see how clean that that is all right let's turn those three invisible and then back visible again there we go and if any of these are too visible you just lower the opacity just a little bit and that's going to get you there all right and when we're working with a guy that's probably a good idea all right let's see the before and the after with that pretty dang good pretty dang good all right let's go ahead and create a new layer we'll take care of the neck you can do this quicker the neck by the way the face is i would re really recommend spending spending some time on the face um it's just a good idea to practice that it'll actually help you understand like how light and shadow works like it, it really will help other areas of your life too like with your photography and just in general like i know that if i paint like a highlight for instance like we'll grab a highlight color and if i paint this a bit wider here it's gonna make his nose look wider right like all i had to do is grab a light color and like push it out more right and like this is just makes his nose look wider or <laughs> i could grab like a dark color and push it in to the right you know it's gonna make his nose look pushed in so once you get a like pretty good understanding and like once you feel comfortable knowing that like light pulls things out and dark pushes things in and you kind of get an idea of like how to actually use that then this is going to become incredibly easy for you because at that point you're just kind of going with your own intuition all right Cool. I can paint this hand a little bit darker here. Kind of let it fade out of the image a little bit more. There we go. All righty. So you can see I'm trying to get match my brush size reasonably well to whatever I'm painting to you know like if I need to paint the center of the section of the finger I'll grab that color and paint it there a few times Let's look at the before and the after with his hand and his neck. Cool, looks pretty good. Let's just lower the opacity of that a little bit. All right, cool. And I'm like looking at this, like, is there anything else that kind of like 
bugs me or I feel like could be, you know, like, could I, can I shape his head better? <laughs> that sort of thing. But it's looking pretty good. I mean, it, it definitely looks, it looks retouched, but it doesn't look like too, it doesn't look fake. Still looks like a photo, in my opinion. Alright. Cool. Let's do one more layer. Just grab a little highlight color from here. Bring it in over there. Oh, that, that didn't work. It didn't work. If you do something and it's like... <laughs> just doesn't look good, just delete the layer. It's like, you know, not a huge deal. Like. I always just make a little you're invisible and then visible back again. And if it makes things better, then I leave it. And if not, I get rid of it. Cool. All right, there we go. That looks great. So let's go ahead and take a look at the before and the after with this frequency separation. Here's our before and the after. So before and the after. And you can see all of our skin texture is completely intact. I just painted over his shirt. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a layer mask on that group and paint black on my layer mask where the shirt is. There we go. All right, here's the before and the after with the whole image and the after. Before and the after. Before and the after. Cool. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next section. We're going to be working on coloring in more details with our man Alex here.